Hello everyone. I released a new version of FlexRouter today and wanted to talk a bit about some of the new features that I added. Uh, so FlexRouter is a contact multi-script used to solve all kinds of crazy use cases around key switching and articulation switching in general. I use it to unify all the uh, contact libraries on my template to conform to one system for, for changing articulations. I use program change events, but you could use pretty much anything. So the first thing to do is if, uh, to install it is to click the link in the description field. It will open uh, your browser to the latest compiled script. You copy the script to your clipboard, jump over to contact, open the multi-script pane, open the edit pane, paste the script in, click apply, and you can close the edit pane. And now it's installed. Now the first feature I wanted to talk about is the ability to redirect an incoming key switch event, which can be either a note or CC or program change, to multiple outgoing MIDI events. And this is useful for example here, I've got a, a patch up from the new library called Cinematic Studio Strings. And you'll notice there are toggles for Legato and Concertino. They actually modify the active articulation, which is pretty cool, but different than I think all of the other libraries in my template where there are dedicated articulations for legato versus non-legato sustains and concertino, et cetera. So I, I, I just want it to work like the rest of my libraries. I've got everything already set up for that. For example, here's what my, my MIDI keyboard looks like. I've got dedicated buttons here for legato, longs, another one for sordino, which is a non-legato version and so on. So um, let's just set up Legato, for example. So I'm going to learn MIDI learn the Legato button on my keyboard, and you can see that sends program 20 in my case. And we're going to have that redirect to um, a bunch of MIDI events. So Cinematic Studio String supports articulation switching by a custom CC58. And you can see that on the uh, chart here from the documentation and legato I'll use advanced legato is going to be cc58 value 6 and then I want to make sure that legato is enabled which is cc value uh, 58 value 76 and that concertino is off which is 91 and so now if I just activate another articulation so you can see if I hit the legato button it jumps me to the sustain patch with all of the the legato and consort set up appropriately similarly if I want to learn long then um, when I do a MIDI learn on my long button, it actually replicates all of the redirects that I had set up before. In this case, I'll just set up a change to legato on to legato off. So if I hit the long button now, you can see legato turns off. So I can toggle between legato and long. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish setting up uh, this Cinematic Studio Strings patch and we'll see you on the other side. <laughs> Okay, so that's done. The patch is set up now to match what I've got for my program changes. Um, just as a real quick demo, here's just a, an excerpt from um, a MIDI track that has a bunch of articulation changes. And let's just run through that and make sure that it works. Yep, and that looks good. The next feature I added is this option called hold redirected notes until next key switch. And this is useful for patches that have temporary modifications to articulations when you press down a key switch note. So let's just clear this stuff here and um, reset everything. Let me pull in a patch from Embertone called the Herring Clarinet. The Herring Clarinet uses key switches for minor second and major second trills, but they're only active as long as those key switches are pressed, and as soon as they're released, it goes back to sustain. Um, so this is different than the rest of my libraries. I want to have uh, a key switch, in this case a program change event, that will switch to um, either the minor second or major second trill, as long as that articulation is active. So now with this new feature, we can do that. Let's uh, first, we're just going to learn and configure standard sustain. And I believe the clarinet uses C1. Yeah, okay, so we'll redirect that to um, C1. And let's just make sure that that works. And it does. So now we're going to configure the trill. So I'm going to learn my button on the keyboard for trill. That's a minor second. And that is D sharp one, 
So I'm going to actually keep this um, C1 to switch to sustains in case I'm in shorts, and then add the key switch for D sharp one, and then click the option to hold those redirected notes. So let's try that and see if it works. Go to longs. Actually, I should turn the volume down. This is quite a loud patch. And now I'll switch to trill, minor second. Click the button back to long. So that worked, and I would configure a major second similarly. The last feature I want to talk about is the ability for key switches to have a velocity range. So uh, the key switch would only be triggered when it is pressed at a velocity within the range. So let's um, let's reset all this and do a quick example here with uh, a sable patch. So suppose we want a single key switch. Um, when pressed lightly, it'll go to uh, spiccato. When pressed moderately, it'll go to the staccato articulation. When pressed hard, uh, it'll go to the staccato dig. That's quite easy to set up now. So we'll learn just C1 as a dummy key switch and redirect it to, um, actually, I'm going to switch to UACC. And I'll send CC32 events uh, from the note-based key switch. So spiccato is uh, UACC value 42, so that goes to CC32 value 42. And let's just make sure that works. Okay, so that now is the full range, but let's lower the range uh, to, let's say, 30. And then we're going to clone this key switch and go from 31 to, I don't know, 90. And we want staccato, which is 40. So now with the key, same key switch, if I had hit it lightly, um, it'll go to spiccato. And when I press it with some you know, reasonable velocity mezzo forte, it'll go to spiccato. Now let's add the, I'm sorry, staccato. Now let's add the last one for staccato dig, clone. And the dig is 49. And then we'll go from 91 to 120, oops, 91 to 127. So now I should have those three layers on the same single key switch. Okay, so that's the new release in a nutshell. Hope you guys found this video helpful and hope you find Flex Router useful. If you have any questions, run into any problems or have any ideas, please let me know on the forum.